Hey everybody, this is Game Freak 10124. Welcome back to more. Let's play The Legend of Zelda, the one where great HD here on my 3 Heart Run. I'm going to be keeping my voice down more than I usually do. Probably trying to keep my voice around this volume because of the time I'm recording right now. As other people in my, in my house are sleeping. Not my, my house, but the house I live in, but yeah. Just like would madly do this to get access to the dungeon. Interestingly enough, they remixed Maycar's instrument. The Baker's instrument sounds like when it's playing by itself plays different or it sounds different in this game than it did in the GameCube version, so they remixed his instrument, what it sounds like, which is in, which is very interesting. Now, the you can pick her up and have her fly you, make her, you have to throw him and he flies independently. Because obviously he's not heavy enough to carry you like or not heavy enough. He's not strong enough to carry you like Medley is. This is the huge size difference. But anyway. Start off by playing the command melody. A lot of people don't like the one tumble because of how confusing it can be, and I can understand why, but especially if you don't know what you're doing, you don't remember everything, but since that's not the case with me and i played the game enough to know what I'm doing, I actually like the one tumble quite a bit. I actually like the wind tumble more than the freaking earth tumble, but it is very confu- it can be confusing and very, very easy to get lost. That right away, because starting off, when we first start off the dungeon, the dungeon is more straightforward. Also, that frickin' stupid douche is gonna hit me and force me to change back into frickin' Link. Thankfully, now that we have fire arrows, we can one-shot these dudes back. How dare you even get to play the command melody a second time? Die, douche bag. Take make her over here and have him stand on this switch. Deactivate the wind so the plane can get by. You don't need to keep him on the switch either. But yeah, when you at first when you start out the start out the dungeon is more straightforward, but once you start um, going through the dungeon further, also going through the so you definitely want to plant those trees with my car, but yeah, that's the gimmick of my car in this dungeon is he plants trees. Yeah. But yeah, like when you first start off the dungeon, it's more straightforward, but as you go further into the dungeon and you open... Uh, well, not open. But as you go through the dungeon and as you get more, gain more access to more areas of the dungeon, the dungeon can become much more confusing to navigate if you don't know what you're doing. Like, even if even with the map, it can be very easy to get lost or not know what you're supposed what you're where you're supposed to go or what you're supposed to do. But then again, that's why you want to use the dungeon map. But thankfully I know what I'm doing, so I can maybe need to use the dungeon map to check what I where I'm at, but for the most part I won't really need to worry about that. But yeah, that's it. One of the gimmicks of this uh, level is you can go ahead and, or not, you can go ahead. One of the gimmicks of this level is using the boost to wait on these platforms and then taking them off for them to shoot you up in the air, and then you move across using the Deku Leaf. <clears throat> The most uh, Deku Leaf heavy dungeon we've had since uh, the Forbidden Woods. 
I'm gonna go ahead and head in time. You can also burn, uh, yeah, burn this with the fire arrows, but from being up here, you wanna go ahead and just throw a bomb. I'm surprised that I was close enough to freaking break the wood over it. Yeah, you can destroy that with a bomb or with fire arrows. guys too. I think I probably would, but I don't know the names of all the enemies in the game. But I never cared enough to learn them. I know I could easily Google them, but I don't care to. If you want to know their names, then just probably look up Legend of Zelda list of enemies or something on Google. There's a locked door and there's two spots, so of course that means you need to take control of the car and plant seeds. After this, prepare to say goodbye for a minute. You cannot control this. This is supposed to happen. Four masters appear, one of them takes Makon. And again, that is programmed to happen. That's not that's, that's there's nothing you can do about that. That will, ha that will happen no matter what. And do not try and skip over those first two trees and try and plant that first tree first, because if you plant that or that top tree first, you plant the topmost tree, they will still appear and take Maycar. I want to say that one's the one that you only have to hit that top one or plant the top tree to freaking make the door open, but um, regardless, if you try and do the top one first, like, the Maycar will still get taken. So go ahead and plant those other two trees first in the order that I did because you will need them later and that will save you the trouble of having to freaking replant them later. But again, you cannot avoid that happening by planting the top tree first because that's the tree that triggers them appearing. And here we have P-Hats again. Remember, if you remember from the Forbidden Woods, just throw the boomerang at them twice to make it very easy work of them. Also, go ahead and turn the up a little bit there. Yeah. Ordinarily, I would completely ignore Makar, but I want to show off his dialogue, so I'm not going to in this playthrough. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, you throw bombs into those guys' mouths to kill them, but there's no reason to bother with them, so just ignore them. And they will respawn later on, too, so don't bother with killing them now. So there's one of two ways you can do this. You can either use the iron boots to fall there, or just fall normally. You don't want to pull off arrows. Yeah, I used the Daco Leaf to blow on these. That's something that I previously but didn't think to mention, is that's another gimmick of this dungeon is much like in the Forbidden Woods using these. Using these to blow these things, but this time they have a different mechanic. And the um, Forbidden Woods, it would there you were on those like lift platforms, and they would make those move. And this one, it makes those I'll just call it walls. It makes those walls go up and down, or it flips those walls, and. Uh, be able to move on if you try and weigh that down with the boots now, then you'll end up pinning the ceiling and fall back down. So what you gotta do is get rid of this floor master. You piece of crap. And what sucks is if you get grabbed by either one of them. Like say you kill one and the other one grabs you, like right there, they will both respawn because you're put into this room. Son of a crap. I forgot about that douchebag completely because I was commentating. Die, you stupid douchebag. Screw you. Anyway, you'll hit the ceiling like I said previously if you're trying to use iron boots, so what you gotta do blow that thing from afar. Glad that thing didn't hit me. I was not trying to freaking do that game, I was trying to put the boomerang away. Now, um, I will say this right now, um, if you guys are watching my Let's Play and haven't done the one temple yet, and you do not have the second Mac upgrade for whatever reason, go to the, like, the quarter of the map that's the southernmost and in the middle. So, all the way to the bottom of the map, that middle square. Go to that spot and get the magic upgraded by defeating that big Octo if you haven't already for whatever reason, because you're going to want double magic specifically for the section right here. It is possible to get through this without the double magic. I don't know that I've ever done this myself, but, uh, completely unintentionally because, of course, he didn't know about the double magic from defeating the Big Akko because he knew nothing about it. All those years ago when Game Grumps did um, Wind Waker, Aaron never got the double magic upgrade and he still managed to get through the Wind Temple without the double magic, so it's a royal pain, but it is actually, in fact, possible, contrary to what you might think, to get through this without the double magic, but it is... It is definitely challenging to get through this without the double magic. So, again, definitely give me that big Akko if you haven't already before coming here. But, again, I did want to mention that it is actually, it is, <sighs> it's hard to believe as it is, it is possible to get through this without double magic. And, again, I know that's for a fact because Aaron of Game Grumps, when Game Grumps did their playthrough, Aaron never had the double magic. <clears throat> yep. So, Huge shout out to Game Grumps because I know that. Or, 
or get huge uh, the game ropes playthrough of Wind Waker for that knowledge because of the war for game ropes playthrough and Aaron never getting the double magic. I probably wouldn't know that it's possible to do this without getting the double magic. So, repeating myself, I'll say one more time, huge shout out to Game Grumps playthrough of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Thanks, Lou, when you have only three hearts. I don't think you'll ever get anything unless maybe you get down to the one fourth of a heart. But because this is zero mode, I don't think I'll ever get down to one fourth of a heart or two two hearts and a fourth of a heart or any amount where I'll have like one heart down to a fourth. <laughs> Again, it's gotta love that there's a thing about this game that I know thanks to Game Grumps' playthrough of the game. Now, ordinarily, you don't. I don't bother with shooting these guys from afar, but you want to shoot this guy from a distance, so go ahead and use the fire arrows. It may take you a few shots to hit him, but it is possible. Dead. So yeah, you do want to pick him off from a distance. I already have the bow and arrow. I'm gonna kill these guys with the arrows. And when you get over here, cut the grass for a bunch of magic to refill yourself. So what you need to do here, you might think you need to use the skull hammer, but you need to pull out the iron boots. And this is where the straightforwardness of the dungeon starts going away. I mean, it's still straightforward for now, but um, hitting this and making that platform go away allowing you act to access to more of the dungeon, this is what causes the dungeon to become, uh, later on, to become not straightforward anymore. And it can definitely be confusing to navigate even with the dungeon map if you don't know what you're doing. But yeah, the other door has is locked and needs a key, so obviously you can't go in there, so you gotta go in this room. And here we have one of the most annoying, consistent, constant noises in the game. But anyway. is a trick I learned from the Blade Gamers Let's Play. I, I'm gonna do it now. So you stand along, because normally you have to fall through these and um, individually, and that's what the game intends for you to do, is have to fall through them individually and then uh, come back up from the other side to do this, but to make it easier, all you have to do is just stand up as one of the platforms and move forward. Like, stand at the edge of one of the platforms, pull out the iron boots, and just before the iron boots activate, press up on the control stick. 
and you'll either be on the outside completely or you'll grab the ledge if you're far enough over. That causes the treasure chest to appear. Now, one thing this does do is it causes enemies to appear and also causes enemies to activate. You guys can just barely see that statue enemy through that one hole in the ground. Those guys are not active unless you hit one of these. It's a specific one of these things that I've busted through with the iron boots. <clears throat> So one activates those guys, and then the other four make other enemies appear. They are green shoes, there are four masters, and I can't remember what else there is. Anyway, you're going to want to pull the bow and arrow for the four masters. Oh yeah, red and green choose to activate the statues, the four masters. Okay, it's just one four master. This is an instance where I'm going to do what you, you're intended to do and do that. Okay, thankfully, okay, gotta keep an eye on that floor master, because I don't want to frickin' get re despawn, or basically, okay, you know what, take that, oh, there's two floor masters, okay, so they're not moving good. Dang it, distance so that actually guy doesn't come to get me. Okay, there. Now I have to work with the other ones, so... Let him be closer, hit him. Keep my distance from the... Yay, I took some damage from the stupid spike. <clears throat> Give me those arrows. Yeah, the, I, I, I could be wrong, but I definitely think the four masters are more aggressive in this dungeon than they were in the Earth Temple, so... Get used to this incessant noise. Uh, let's see... It's not gonna stop until you finally get up top. Okay, there we go, I think. Let me see... Okay, it is over there. Yep. <clears throat> so, you need to push this over to that one square and then push that other uh, steel box, I'll call it, right next to it so that you can uh, use it as a step to get up on top of this thing and use the iron boost to get back up. A temporary relief from the noise. Gotta love that incessant noise, har har. So, collect this chest, and your ears finally have permanent relief from that stupid noise because they go away. Hallelujah, the spikes are done doing that, making that incessant noise. And the treasure chart. Now, if you don't want to mess with getting the treasure chart, you can just fall through one hole in the floor to take care of one of the enemies and then uh, go to the other side and just get the key and disregard it. But I definitely wanted to show off fighting all the enemies, so. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I don't wanna. Ball the fire arrows ahead of time because we are in for a mini boss fight. Here we have a Wizrobe. It's either called. He's either, I don't remember for sure. His name is either Master Wizrobe or Head Wizrobe. But he is the top Wizrobe. And unlike normal, the regular Wizrobe actually takes two fire arrows to destroy. He has more health than regular other regular Wizrobes. So. To make easy work of him and prevent him from spawning enemies, you want to go ahead and. I'll target him to make sure you hit him with fire arrows, and fire arrows make short work of him as long as you know what you're doing and you know how to move, how to avoid him, and how to make sure you're positioned properly to L target him when he's up top on those platforms. So anyway, use you to get my regular arrows back out, I'm gonna go ahead, pull back out the grappling hook, and then take care of you. But again, I highly recommend take care of the wizard ropes first. Just move around constantly. You can completely disregard this dark nut. <clears throat> you don't want it. Yeah, yeah. Definitely do not fight the dark nut off. Let the dark nut live until you take care of both wizards because if you're trying to feed him first. While you're if you focus on him because of him being annoying, if you want to focus, if you try and focus on him beating him first, that will allow both of the other Wizardropes time to spawn in a bunch of freaking unnecessary enemies. So definitely take care of both Wizardropes first. Don't worry about the Dark Knight; he's the least of your concern. Because again, it's as I demonstrated, it's plenty easy easy enough to completely disregard him, and he can't really do anything to you as long as you keep moving. But, after this we get the dungeon item. You got the hook shot, the dungeon weapon. It extends, it retracts, it latches onto things. What a cool invention. Set it to Y, X, or R, and then hold the button, blah blah blah. Now, of course, the door is locked, so to get out, use the item you just got. Pull yourself up. You need a soul hammer for this. Yep. The description of it said it latches onto things. Other than pulling yourself up from places, there is one other function of the hook shot. Now, this doesn't work for all enemies, however, one thing you can do, walk into these guys, pull them next to you with a hook shot, and it kicks, it automatically takes out P hat's uh, wings, I'll call it. It pulls them, yeah, it pulls them right up next to you, automatically gets rid of their wings, and you do one sword attack, and they're dead. Okay, fine. Another way besides all targeting is just aim this at them, get the action command prompt, and eventually, in first person mode, do that to pull them as well. But again, before scaling, I recommend, like, as you scale this, get rid of the P hat so you don't have to worry about them knocking you off. Our ultimate, your ultimate goal for climbing up all of these platforms using the hookshot is to get back up to where Maycar is. Because now that we have the hookshot, we can free him. <clears throat> okay, so... Get rid of you. Okay, so now you need to go this way and use the Deku Leaf. And 
here we have the other dungeon item. The compass. Because of how confusing this dungeon can get, it is very nice that they literally give you the compass. And anyway, yeah, use the iron boots to go this way, and then pull the hook shot back out to continue on. Car, equip the iron boots, stand back away from this thing because if it falls on you, you will take damage. And then aim this for the target. The thing falls. And Maycar is now free. Now let's go in here and get another free joy pendant. So now you have Maycar. Go ahead, want to go for that direction, so throw Maycar, Wind Waker, and as soon as you take control of him, start tapping the A button. So now. Make sure I'm not over the pit, so I'm gonna do that a little bit. And then. Hook shot your way up. This takes you back in the room you were before. Actually. Throw my boomerang at you to stun you, and then pull out my fire arrows. Come on, Megar, why do you have to frickin' talk now? I wanna defeat that frickin' wizard. Wait, wait, I think the hook shot, the, the hook shot, you can, you, you have, you probably the hook shot, but the trees are winning, give it a try! <laughs> Thank you, Megar, now I have to frickin' redo this. Oh. Well, not redo this, but you guys know what I mean, I have to wait for, I had to wait for him to respawn, and then frickin' Free L target him. Yeah. My, my May car, why? I blame the game. Well, it is the game's fault technically, but I still had to blame him for a couple seconds. <clears throat> anyway, so May car. Oh! Got the A button. Take him to the top. This time you don't have to worry about the floor masters. Then, uh. Grab the hook shot. And make your way up here. But yeah, that was the purpose of planting the trees, other than being able to move on earlier. It's also providing Link a way to be able to get up with a hook shot when you eventually come back here with Mega. Now in this room, you've got three of these freaking bubbles from the Earth Temple. Is there another way I had of defeating these guys? I don't think so. I think you have to use the ice arrows on them. Um, let's see. Okay, good.
Usually what you want to do is defeat the first two bubbles closest to you, but that stupid douchebag is not coming towards me, so... And here's what I'm gonna do so make hard of the fall. Loot. <sighs> really? Get back here, you. I'm here. Okay, so... Okay, fine, I'm gonna have to have be the kid. I'm gonna have to freaking do it in the matter of which I don't wanna do it. I'm gonna have to unfortunately have it be this. Maybe you won't come towards me. Stupid bubble. Okay, good. I planted the tree before I got to make her. So I can at least get up. Up. Already then completely ignore me. Thank you, moron. Oh, sure, the other one saw me now. Okay, is it fine? I'm just gonna go ahead and deal with it. Hook shot my way back up and get rid of those stupid douchebags. Oh, okay, the hook shot. So you want to do is you go into first person and pull that second one towards you. That's what you want to do, okay. So when you're down there, um, get rid of the first one that's closest to you, then the second one that's around this platform, you want to use the hook shot and pull him towards you to get rid of him. Then the other two aren't really that big of an issue to make her. I do not believe at that point Then you can just plant the other two trees and not have to worry about them knocking make her out. I mean... They can, so you gotta be careful, but it is possible to get through this without having me hard to hit by them if you get rid of the first two. Like, I actually forgot that you could use the hook shot to pull those douchebags towards you just like the pea hats. That's right, you stupid bubble. Now, there's the floor master, and that guy can he can grab Makar and throw him back to where he was in prison before, so do not let Makar get captured by that floor master. So make sure you're roughly in this area before you land Makar on the ground to make sure you don't get grabbed by that douchebag. Then take him over to the door and make sure he's safe before you go back to Link. I can completely completely disregard you. Up your floor master. So of course what you have to do here is have Link stand on one switch and have Makar stand on the other, and you don't even really need to use the command melee to do this. So I wasn't trying to call him. I was wanting to put the frickin' sword away, but anyway. End the video off here though. So, next video, I should be able to finish up the one temple. So, anyway, guys, that said, that's it for this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time for more Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The One Wigger HD Hero Mode 3 Heart Run. Bye, everybody.